We have a great show for you today. We're talking about the NFC East. Last year, they were the NFC least, but there was a lot of fantasy value that you could find. We get to talk about Antonio Gibson and Washington and Ryan Fitzpatrick and Mike gets all sweaty in a good way. I mean, not for us, but for you. And a lot more on today's show. Make sure you subscribe, you like it, and enjoy. And now, we turn to the world of sports. The football season is upon us, and that means it's time to get ready for your fantasy football drafts. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the Cat's Pajamas, and only tool you need. The best rankings in the business. Sleepers, breakouts, values. It's even got a free companion app. Don't be a pigeon-livered foozler. The ultimate draft kit will keep you on the up and up, and keep all the hornswogglers at bay. Don't even think about entering a fantasy football draft without it. Don't be a square. Head to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Saturday, July 24th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Ooh. Only one more Saturday show after this one. That's true. You're inferring... Then there's a Monday show. Then yeah. there's a Tuesday show. Then there's a Wednesday show and a Thursday, Friday show to boot. Oh, I thought yeah, you were five a week singing the song from Happy Days. Oh yeah, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, um, I realized hey, Andy's like, oh, a Happy Days reference. <laughs> you guys want to riff on that for a while? You know what? Love I, that show. I guess I need to be proud to say that I wasn't really a Happy Days guy. Yeah, you should. I'm. Surprised for one. <laughs> well, I had just finished watching, uh, you know, the, I love Lucy. Andy Griffith. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, you're right. We've got five days a week coming soon. I realized this morning as I was getting ready for the day, because in the off season, when we have three shows a week, we record these the day before. Mm -hmm. And when we move into the regular season schedule, we record them very early in the morning. And I realized that now, uh, my kids are going back to school at the exact same time that that starts. And the whole, like the, any summer lazy routine, any, any slow wake up in the morning, it's gone, guys. Yeah. I, All right at once. But, but I had the, the realization, whatever, yesterday. I was like, oh, back to the old alarm clock. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We've been getting up so slowly in the morning Wait lately. A minute. You don't use an alarm clock? No. Do you, Andy? No. What? No, the the sun is my alarm clock. Yeah. It wakes me up. It wakes me up every morning. I still right use an seven. alarm clock, right? I sleep forever. What's it set at? It's set at 7 right now. What? Yeah. You need an alarm clock to wake up at 7. That is correct. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. we've Mike and I are we've been trained from years and years of I guess. of sunrises and sunsets and kids. Well, and it's cuz at the the old job we had to. We weren't the boss. We had oh, to be on time. He's. Oh, I never set an alarm <laughs> clock at that, that job. All right, we do have big news to talk about on the show today. We're into the NFC East on our divisional breakdown shows. A lot of great feedback coming in about these episodes. Last uh, last week we did, or I should say Thursday, we did the NFC West. Had to talk about the Cam Akers injury. And we've got another injury to talk about today as well before we get into the news and, and discuss those sad realities of fantasy mm -hmm. football. Uh, I want to remind you, you can go to Instagram, follow the show, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe over on YouTube. I encourage you. Go do that. We do a lot of live streams. Mike has a Sunday morning live stream we do during oh, the year. Oh, baby. And uh, like when we did the uh, Sleeper Bowl, we that's on YouTube as well. And if you subscribe, click the bell, you'll get notified about all the live events as well as the episodes. You can also win an Antonio Gibson signed mini helmet 
That giveaway is coming to an end very soon, Brooks. Yep, just a few and days you, left. You're not eligible. Dang it. Mm, but yeah. everybody else is, and you just have to do a couple things, but they're all free. Yep, footclangiveaway.com to enter there. And one of those things that you can do to get that entry once you go there is by going to footclanvote.com, you can nominate us right now for the uh, podcast awards. Yeah. You sure that uh, I am sure that it forwards. Yes. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. Did, you, did you do it? Yeah, I. Ch- yeah, of course. No, I'm. Just... Okay, I thought maybe you were the one who like went and did a, a forward. Oh no no no! I make Andy do that. <laughs> You're bringing just new information to me, and I just am vetting it to make sure um, that it was right. Anything else that we need to talk about, Brooks? Anything you got on the agenda before we get into the news? Nah, let's talk nah, about big Michael news. Thomas. Oh, Michael Thomas. <laughs> News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Okay, we woke up to it. It's the, look, and I guess uh, this is this isn't the worst. Like this is not the Cam Akers news. No, uh, it's not great, but it's not that. It's not Cam and, Akers, and there's a lot to talk about with it. Michael Thomas yep. expected to miss the start of the season. He underwent a surgery in June to repair ligaments in his ankle. In June, thanks, Saints beat writers. <laughs> they kept that uh, on the down low. And the estimated time of recovery for this surgery is four months. And so he could be on the sideline for several weeks into the year. I've seen everything up to a half a year. And I believe the three of us, when we went into the ultimate draft kit in our rankings, we made adjustments based on the present right now assumption that he'll miss at least six weeks. Yeah, he he feels like a perfect candidate for the pup list which means he automatically has to miss miss those six games um not mitch them no which is what the bears did at quarterback last year yeah well yeah. nobody beats mitch uh traquan smith marquez callaway deontay harris welcome to your wide receiver room uh no more emmanuel sanders no more jared cook who you know whatever you want to say about how his skills are progressing he had experience at the nfl level so right now, don't know the quarterback. You don't really know. I mean, Traquan Smith has the most experience by far of that group, but has been inconsistent. We were looking up Emmanuel Sanders' contributions last year with Michael Thomas missing time. He was over 700 yards receiving. So how do you look at this offense now? And, you know, Adam Troutman's there. Alvin Kamara's there. Yeah, I mean, the, those two guys uh, get a clear bump. Adam Troutman, <laughs> Mike is super excited because he was – he was, you know, one of the first to the party on the Adam Troutman train, and this this ends up obviously giving him an opportunity for more targets. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of times when a tight end becomes fantasy relevant, it's because they are just necessary. Yep. It's it's not like they're super talented. Now you're mixing the hopeful talent. We have not seen it realized on the NFL field, but he was drafted uh, with talent in mind to be a good pass catching. Uh, tight end at the NFL he, he level. He was drafted to be a starting tight end. He wasn't a uh, a day three pick that is like, well, well, let's see if this this guy makes the team. Right, and you mix that with the necessary opportunity, so that 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 gets a little exciting for those who are you know in, in that camp. The wide receiving core is, as it stands now, without Michael Thomas, might be the worst in the league. Uh, it is it's, it's one where you expect New Orleans to there there are no free agent wide receiver veterans out there just waiting to be scooped up of any note. Um, they're all Larry busted. Fitzgerald. Right. Larry Fitzgerald would be the best, and I doubt he's going to change teams at this point in his career. Right. And he's also, you know, he's the best of the group. No offense to Larry. He's not in his prime. Deontay not, Harris not has tw- had 20 catches last year. Marquez Callaway had 25. So you're right. I mean, there's not really a lot to go on. This is not something where – Many of us are going to be having to take a July 24th gamble on the wide receiver room. We need to wait for training camp to see what happens. And uh, if you have to take the shot, it has to be Traquan Smith. Yeah, but, yeah 100%. But I mean, l- let's be clear. Traquan Smith, the experienced Traquan, 34 catches. 34 last year. Yeah, tra- he only missed two games at the end of the year. He barely out had more receptions than, than Callaway. Yeah, I mean, you you had him. I'd almost take the shot on Callaway. You'd have him being third fiddle last season to Emmanuel Sanders and and Michael Thomas when he was out there. Traquan Smith was part of my argument in favor 
of Adam Troutman. Traquan Smith it holds a special place in my heart right now. Um, you know, we'll, oftentimes when we roll out new products here at the, you know, the fantasy footballers, it takes multiple years. We don't roll it out in year one because we want to get things right. Um, and I was working on something called the True Score. Plus the alarm clock thing. metric. Well, yeah, the alarm clock. <laughs> I mean, we're you know we we don't wake up very early, um, so that's going to take extra years. Uh, but I was working on some w for a true score that really looks at um, all four levels of the field behind the line of scrimmage within 10 over 20 and 10 to 20. Um, like and a where, whole, where wide receiver is catching the ball. Yes, where they're catching it, what they do relative to other players at the position. And one of the reasons I especially pushed the pause button was because one wide receiver who just looked really good in that was Traquan Smith. So I'm actually curious to see what this opportunity does. He do anything, but that doesn't mean that you should be drafting him. Um, he has not done much to date. Twenty eight receptions in his rookie year, down to eighteen, then to thirty four. Yeah, so I'm fine taking one of like a, a double digit flyer on him. And since we don't know who the quarterback is, I think this makes it possibly more likely that Taysom Hill uh, would be the quarterback Maybe. in the sense that. Here They're going to need to get the running game going. He gives it gives at least another option if the pass, you know, the passing game isn't there. Taysom could scramble. I do agree with that. I think it is, it does lend itself towards Hill because Hill provides offense. I mean, it, it, with his legs, he provides another weapon. Camara, Troutman, and Hill plus a top five defense. Could you imagine how many picks Jameis could throw with this wide receiving core? Oh my! Gosh. I mean, so many. There is no limit. There is no, there's no limit. Yeah, I, I guess I think the more important kind of final thing to say here is there's a question mark into how long Thomas is gone, but then there is a question mark about will he be Michael Thomas when he comes back? And the, Whoa, I, I we think, got some thunder going on. I think on. the studio just got rocked. Were we? Was huh. that a lightning bolt of some sort? Uh, Brooks, we're could all you, still here. Brooks, can you get the door? Thor is here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to ask him to pull the umbrella out. Mm, he would fly away. Um, wow, a storm in Arizona. We're not used to this. We may have to pause and go watch it. It's a special event. Uh, so, But Michael Thomas last year played hurt, and last year wasn't the same Michael Thomas. Now he's coming back from an injury that was likely a re-injury because he clearly wasn't fine. He took part in what? some stuff with the team in May and then had to get surgery in June. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of players hurt their ankles. Sometimes they need surgery. And then sometimes it is this surgery, which is much more rare. It's the deltoid ligament. So it's on the inside of the ankle, which has a much more Dr. difficult... Dr. Donuts in the house. <laughs> uh, much more difficult recovery time. You can't speed it along. So it's one of those things where... Um, he could end up missing half the year. I fully expect him to start on the pup. If he starts on the pup, he's missing six games. So the question goes, where do I draft him? And because people are, you know, he's Michael Thomas. Sure. And he's going to be dropping in a draft. Do you buy the injury dip? My recommendation would be not unless I have an IR spot. 100%. Because if you're going to miss at least six weeks and then possibly more, and then when he comes back. Who's the quarterback? You don't know who the quarterback is, and well, you by don't then know we if he's know. right. You don't know if he's a hundred percent when he comes back. So you're talking you might be holding on to a player for eight nine weeks, ruining a roster spot because even though it's not starting, your bench is still a roster spot that has value to the waiver wire, to who you can grab, who you can keep away, who you can uh, plan for extra defenses on the next week, things like that. So um, if you've got an IR slot, I would be willing to draft him a little bit later, but um, it, it's dicey. All right, let's talk about another wide receiver with an ankle issue. Amari Cooper is going to open camp on the pup list. That's not necessarily um, surprising, but he had a Week 17 injury. He underwent a procedure on January 7th. Our injury expert, Matthew Betts, says coming off of a surgery, uh, athletes can develop irritation in the ankle joint, so that's what he's dealing with, or tendinitis. Um, should respond well to rehab and rest. But we don't think right now that he'll miss regular season time. But does this does the possibility that he could make Michael Gallup a mid-round, late-round steal? I, I'm not looking towards M Michael Gallup currently. I mean, drafts won't happen for 
several more weeks, and I think we'll have information by then. You, you're going to see Saquon and, and Amari Cooper and others start camp on the pup, and that's not the same as going into the season on the pup. Um, so we just right. talked about you're on the pup. It's a guaranteed six games missed. Um, that's not the active PUP in the in the training camp time. You can um, come right off of it. Yeah, you can come off whenever you're healthy. Uh, this is a different ankle injury that he should be able to come back with and be fine. I feel like by the time most fantasy drafts happen, they know. And to me, it's more about CD Lamb because CD Lamb is being drafted very similar to yeah, same spot Amari basically. Cooper and. I just don't know how the Amari Cooper may be missing a game or two. How, you're saying you would raise your if CD I, Lamb hopes? Because I would start Michael Gallup 100% of weeks that Amari Cooper's not there. I, I would agree. I guess my point is is I think by that time we will know whether or not he is missing games, and I don't expect him to miss games. If he doesn't miss games, then I'm not that interested in Michael Gallup. Saquon on the pup to start training camp. Kadarius Tony on the reserve COVID-19 list. Um, I think we're all hopeful that there will be – Far less COVID reserve news than we had last year, where it was a, I mean that was a wild ride for fantasy players. But this is that this is not great for Kadarius Tony, like to I, miss some yeah, time. Which to be to be fair to the news, we don't know the we don't know if he was just exposed. Correct. Yeah, we don't know if he is positive or not. But if he's if he ends up missing training camp, oh, it's be, John Ross time. I hear what you're saying. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't hear that. <laughs> but the, if, if Kadarius Tony misses training camp, that is that is devastating for his first half outlook. Very unlikely. I mean, he was a player that we're not expecting big things out of rookie year anyway. Right. So you're right. I mean, he's not really in consideration. Um, Ramondre Stevenson starting on the injury uh, non football injury list. Uh, in early June, they had said he's fighting through some things, but if you are looking for clarity in that backfield, I'm going to be honest with you. Patriots running back. Patriots running back, Ramondre Stevenson, thank you. Fourth-round pick. I Before even knowing this news, I made some trades tr angling for Damian Harris Ooh. in the recent weeks. Now, I, I didn't get him, but I, I went after him with intention because I am starting to rise on – Nice. Uh, the consistency that we'll see from Damian Harris. And, you know, his real threat would have been Stevenson being there on day one, working himself into a timeshare, but the odds of that were already low. And then now with the injury, I mean, it, this is Damian Harris's backfield. And, and honestly, I mean, if, if you don't know who Ramondre Stevenson is, uh, he's a rookie prospect coming in who – uh, has dealt with weight issues and in whether he's in shape or out of shape makes a gigantic difference to the, you know what you see on the field the fact that he's on the NFI list it doesn't inspire me to believe that he's going to come into the season once he gets back in perfect tip top peak performance shape so that's that's uh yeah it speaks to what you're saying and then uh, just circling back to the covid policies for the NFL they did announce on Thursday that if a game cannot be rescheduled due to a COVID outbreak among unvaccinated players. The game will result in a forfeit for the team with the outbreak. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we dealt with some rescheduling last year. So there's not going to be – if that happens, you won't get a game back for that team and right. those players. The, this, is, this is the NFL flexing on the players, sending a message, saying get it done. The NFLPA came out after this and said – uh, just so you know, these were the same rules last year, um, which I, I did not know that at at first. Uh, but basically, the, 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 well, we know that the, the NFL last year this because this one is spe specifically talking about unvaccinated players. The but last year the rules of of game checks of rescheduling. and those uh, and, and yes. rescheduling and those things yeah, the money were the, thing same. Is the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise, that's all I've got for news. That was today's news notes brought to you by Sleeper. As always, um, Sleeper. They've been adding some great stuff lately. I know mm -hmm. the I iPad support something they've been working on. Um, I, I, I heard an idea that's worth mentioning. And somebody talked about, you know, they complain about people taking too much time in a draft. And that someone had the idea of doing chess style rules on drafting where you have a full, you have a set allotment of time. Oh, how funny. And so while you're on the clock, you're you're using up some time. And then when you make your pick. Is that what that clock does? You didn't know that? I no. didn't either. 
Oh yeah, the clock in in chess. I never. I thought it was just like that's how you really flex on somebody. Like I'm yeah. kicking your butt, and look at the amount of time no. it takes me to do my move. You get a set amount of time. And how so, much time do you have for the whole game? For the whole game. Oh. So if you were to go over your time in a game, you would then lose. You didn't know that. No. No, Did no, because you... I'm not a nerd. <laughs> Take that, chess nerds. Uh, neither of you guys watched the... Um, oh, I did. I watched it. Queen's Gambit? I did. I and you didn't it. comprehend that reality during the entirety they of that show? They never once said... I've always seen them hit the little timer. Yeah. I just thought it was like, th this is keeping track of how much time it takes. I'm smarter oh, okay. than you. I thought you were busting out a searching for Bobby Fischer reference. But what do you think about that idea for like, you know, everybody starts with a certain amount of time. So if you want to take it up... I love that Sleeper is always willing to explore new things. I think that's a terrible idea. Because that just gives people much more time in the beginning, like way more time uh, in those first few rounds to okay. slow down. In a 5-0 game, I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading. In oh, a, no. Google Mike is back. In a 5-0 game, the white and black clock each gets five minutes, meaning that the game could take up to ten minutes in total. What? Dude. That's not, that's not a... Uh, I have... When I finish a chess game... That, that's certainly not... That's regular, a fast. That's game. not regular chess. Yeah. A slower that would be game, speed chess. A slower game is f uh, fifteen to thirty minutes. Okay. Yeah. Impressive. Well, I mean, a whole new world. Also, Mike needlessly dunks on all <laughs> nerds from everything except for his own nerddom. Also, yeah. guys, which is I have I'm, I, I'm a little out of it. I'm uh, I'm trying I'm trying to push through. <sighs> Wild night of Dungeons and Dragons last night. <laughs> <laughs> Not a joke. <laughs> no. Not, a, not joke. a joke. But he's not a nerd like those nerds. <laughs> also, now you know why there's no alarm. Uh, um, all right. So you can switch to Sleeper. Put your league on there. It'd be great. Uh, before we start NFC East, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Code Codecademy. Uh, look, there's never been a better time than right now to become a programmer. And what Code Codecademy does is let you learn code on your own terms. So simply put, Codecademy is the best way to learn to code online. They not only teach you job-ready coding skills, but they help you build unique projects for your portfolio, earn certificates, and even prep for technical interviews, which it's technically hard to say that. Um, technical interviews. Technical interviews. Look, we, we come from a, game, a gaming and game design background. Uh, we work with programmers. I, I've done some of that in my day. My son is an aspiring programmer and we're talking python html css which were kind of the languages i learned early on sql javascript things that will help you get a great job like my son is so ambitious and excited about using this platform i've been on the platform so is he it's great and there are great opportunities there for in-demand jobs and code academy puts you in the right position to do that you can join the millions of people learning to code with code academy to see where coding can take you Get 15% off your Codecademy Pro membership when you go to Codecademy.com and use the promo code BALLERS. That's promo code BALLERS at Codecademy to get 15% off Codecademy Pro, the best way to learn to code. C-O-D-E-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com, promo code BALLERS. Before we jump in, I got I got something that I need oh, to no. bring up on the podcast. Now, if you have been with this podcast for a a large amount of time you know thank congratulations you for, yes yeah and thank you for still and being i'm sorry here. uh a while back jason moore that's me uh you you tried to start a movement a movement when it came to a beverage oh yeah the jason moore the jason moore that's right and, and what was that oh it's half sprite half lemonade uh, i'm gonna be honest it's probably about 55 percent sprite 45 lemonade but hey, when you order it you just say Jason Moore, and they know 50-50 is fine. You also have to specify, again, you can't say Jason Moore. He tried. He tried. I've, I mean, you tried a lot. I've ordered plenty of Jason Moores, and then when they ask what that is, I <laughs> teach them what it is. But, yes. but Not, Mike has an announcement to make. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you saw the, the viral videos of uh, NBA champion Giannis. He, yeah. was, he was out there. Giannis ought to be illegal. <laughs> yes. Uh, destroyer of our souls. But he went to a Chick-fil-A, and he bought a whole bunch of nuggets. He also bought a half Sprite, half Chick-fil-A, 
or uh, uh, half lemonade. I did uh, see half this lemonade, half sprite. Salt in the wounds. Yes, I saw the salt being poured into my. Well, wounds. it's going to get uh, going to no. get worse. It's yeah. going to get worse. Chick- no, because Chick Fil A. No, they're not. Is now in fact offering in some locations a Chick Fil A fifty fifty. That's what they're calling it. A a Chick Fil A fifty fifty. Yeah, half sprite, half, half Chick Fil A lemonade. Oh, I'm down with that. I thought you were going to say it was a Giannis. Oh. And if it was a Giannis, I was going to be a <laughs> little bit angry. No, this is great news because I can let let Chick-fil-A help proliferate my creation. But now it's it, it will never, ever, ever be the Jason Moore. Oh, absolutely. Once people get used not. to it. Oh, I'm ta- it will I, not. It yeah. will be the 50-50. My, time stamp this, Brooks, because <laughs> it'll be the Jason Moore. Still working on that. Yeah, it's coming. All right, let's do it. Let's get divisional. All right, this there's a lot to talk about in the NFC East. A lot. Um, this was not a good division last year. <laughs> Seven and nine won it. Two six and ten teams. A four and eleven team. We start by talking about Washington, but again, I want to division remind people <laughs> they were seven and nine, right? So like distortion has happened. I think you know you win the division. And that comes along with, wow, you know, Mike's been excited about Washington. I think we're uh, hopeful for the marriage of Ryan Fitzpatrick and this, and this football team. But this was a 7-9 and nine team. This is also a team that right now, what do you think the Vegas line is for Washington? Oh. See, I, I wondered if either of you had thought about this. Uh, I, I feel like it's easy to project the 50-50 teams. This is a, 50, this is a 500 team. So I would usually say 8-8, eight and eight, but it's, I'm gonna give there's them, more games, so 8.5. I'm going to give them 9. Eight and a half. Jason mm. has once again cheated and uh, read the. I mean, got it right on his own. <laughs> nope. Uh, no, you've been hitting them pretty well. Started two and seven last year though with Dwayne Haskins, Kyle Allen. Uh, this was a this was a bad offensive football team with a capital B. Really, mm. really bad. Great defensive team. Um, second in terms of pass yards given up. Fourth in points against. Put it together to win. Over the last handful of weeks, enough games to win the division with a sub-500 record. So I think we begin by really examining, I think, the upside and downside of investing fantasy-wise into this offense. Because on paper last year, Mm -hmm. 30th in total yards. That tells you what you need to know, 25th in points per game. Uh, It was led by Haskins. It was led by Alex Smith. Uh, Taylor Heineke for a, for a moment and Kyle Allen. Yeah. Kyle Allen. And this year, the big additions, the two big additions are Ryan Fitzpatrick and Curtis Samuel. And so can those two additions take this from a dead last or nearly dead last offensive football team and put them on the map as a top half? 100% to me, they can do that. And here's where we need to, bust out a very interesting stat that differentiates fantasy football and real life football. You just illustrated how terrible this offense was overall. And yet they had two top, two top 24 running backs, a top 20 wide receiver and a top 10 tight end for fantasy football. So don't let the, the, uh, the, the idea and projection that a team is going to have a bad offense completely scare you away from fantasy options on that team. They are, uh, they are not mutually exclusive. Yeah, that, Saquon, James Robinson. So it, it it happens. But I think that the addition of Ryan Fitzpatrick is is gigantic for uh, for what this team can do moving forward and what this offense will be. the The quarterback play was very poor for this team last year, and and as as fun as it is to talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick and sing his praises. He's not the greatest quarterback in the world. In fact, the, the last time that we had seen him, you know, or, or we've we've seen him uh, with a full season worth of games once in the past eight years. He is just a spot starter. He's been a backup. But even with all that, he is much better than what Washington had to deal with all of last year. You get Terry McLaurin, who's one of the best young wide receivers in the game, in my opinion, the athleticism the actual skill at the wide receiver position and a player who is willing to force feed him the ball uh, uh, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, a quarterback who's not afraid to let it rip before 
you know for sure that Terry McLaurin is actually open. He's trusting in the player, and he trusts in that he's going to make the cut and end up wide open. He will take some chances. Yes, it turns into turnovers, but it also turns into a, a higher-powered offense as a whole. So I guess the question then is, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think due to the history you just outlaid and the age, right, he'll be 39 during the year, being drafted as the quarterback 25 in the 15th round right now. But every single time that he's been given the opportunity to start in yeah. recent years, Tampa Bay, Miami, uh, the Jets, we end up, you know, two weeks into his, you know, the regime change when he takes over at quarterback and we're all scrambling to pick him up on the waiver wire and you're, you know, you're, he's winning you games. Yes. So why not go with Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> then? Uh, I think he, he's phenomenal when it comes to uh, having fun and putting up big performances, but he's also known to completely implode from time to time. Um, you know, he was on pace last year for 4,000 yards and 25 touchdowns, but also 17 interceptions, even though a lot was made about how he was much more safe and secure with the ball. Eh, okay, that, well, yes, but also still not great. So I think that there's, uh, th there's, there's fear of the implosion mixed with there's no chance here with such a great defense that Ryan Fitzpatrick comes out and really levels up at you know at, almost at 39. 40 and and becomes a top five guy. Whereas when you're drafting these late quarterbacks, you know if if I'm drafting someone later like Ryan Tannehill, he could easily be a top five guy. Yeah, it, Ryan Fitzpatrick is. You have punted the quarterback position even later than Ryan Tannehill. I'm fine going into the season with Ryan Fitzpatrick as my starter. Chargers, Giants, Buffalo, Atlanta. But first two weeks at home, decent matchups. Yeah, and while so you Jason's, could start the year with him. Jason's projecting that the Chargers are better defense, but we don't know that that will actually, yeah, I'm not, actually be what happens. So, right. I mean, those first two games, that's perfectly fine. In the seven starts last year for Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick on a points-per-game basis, he was tied with Russell Wilson. And in uh, fantasy points. I, I will say this, you know, if you if you play in a super flex league, Mike, we're gonna be doing a super flex mock. We are. Um I believe next week. No, we're gonna mock super flex. Oh, fantastic. You, you That's got the order, also my favorite. You got the gonna, order we'll wrong. do both. Yeah. We we, we can multitask that. <laughs> um but <laughs> um Super Brooks over there is yeah. uh, how you feeling? I'm good. Yeah. Brooks we, doesn't care because we're is doing the, it. Really he is like, the official champion of the Superflex League. Yeah, really like to have three quarterbacks in a Superflex League. And when you're looking at your third quarterback, the Derek Carr types, the Ryan Fitzpatrick types, those are fantastic options. All right, let's talk about Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, and the running back room for Washington. Uh, I have a note here that, uh, look, we're all pretty high on Gibson. He's our RB13, just outside of the RB1 range. Um my note that I put in here was if his workload, if you knew his workload was going to be identical this year, upcoming, as it was last year, then he would be a bus candidate for me uh, because of the disproportionate quantity of touchdowns that he managed to put up on a team that was you know, 25th in points per game, 30th in total yards, 11 touchdowns on the level of opportunities that he had last year. is a it's, It'd be a tough number to come back and say, hey, he's going to do that again. Obviously, the excitement around Gibson is that he was a rookie. He's going to have uh, come into year two with more experience, more trust of the team. And I think that that is what most people project. I'm the lowest of our group. I have him at 15. Uh, I do think JD McKissick was valuable last year and will continue to be involved. 80 receptions for McKissick. And so uh, when you look at this running back room, what can go right? What can go wrong? Well, what can go right is obvious to me with with Antonio Gibson truly becoming a top five type of back. I, I see that in his range of outcomes. Um, I, I think he has a higher probability than a lot of the guys that are being drafted in his range to to do that. You're right, Andy. It will it will take more usage. But the the number one comp that he got coming out of college for a lot of reasons, we comped him to this is also the career comp that I now see for him, which is David Johnson. He was a wide receiver that turned running back. So he was pretty inexperienced at running back. He comes in his rookie year. If it, you know, if you think about David Johnson, he magically finished as an RB1, just like Antonio Gibson in did in his rookie yep. year, even though you know David Johnson had 125 rushing attempts. 
You needed that level up of, of volume, and it came. And the team is very much all about, you know, the, the OTA, there were two big pieces of information that came out on Antonio Gibson during the OTAs this year. One was that the toe injury is still lingering, and that does honestly scare me a little bit. And two was that it was, quote, night and day, the difference that Antonio Gibson has and that he is ready to be the man. Like, they, when they drafted him, they were talking about his three-down usage. He's not a rookie anymore. He's made a bunch of changes, and I fully, fully expect him to have a massive workload increase. I think he's going to be a phenomenal player this year, but that's the what could go right. Um, the what could go wrong, I think, will center around the toe injury. Maybe, Andy, you think it centers around uh, J.D. McKissick yeah, very, or the, very few the teams. Yeah, very, very few teams um, are willing to employ the McCaffrey workload for a player, especially when they've had great effectiveness with another back on the roster. So, for me, what can go wrong is that, you know, Everything out of camp is that J.D. McKissick is very secure in the backup role. And nothing you said about Antonio Gibson all last season, the Christian McCaffrey hype. Look, all of that was true last year, and he had 36 receptions. He was a rookie. Right. And he got injured. And he started getting more involved in the passing game before he got injured. He, he didn't really, though. J.D. McKissick was one of the league leaders in receptions, and over the last couple weeks of the year, I think he had five receptions total. So – uh but I, I thought this was the part where I say what could go wrong, which is that they continue to use J.D. McKissick a lot, and you well, don't see yeah, – I mean, you're... Miles Sanders was a great pass catcher in college. He was considered to be a three-down back. Uh, so was Josh Jacobs in college. He was considered to be a three-down back. I don't know why we can't see a world where Gibson doesn't level up passing-wise. The – you. You can't use the last two games of the season. That was when, when Antonio Gibson was coming off of that toe injury, and he probably shouldn't have been, even been playing. The four games before he went down to the injury, he was seeing four targets a game, and that's a that's a very healthy pace. You would love like to see more, uh, but it's also – I mean, it, the not many coaches are willing to use a player at the, the Christian McCaffrey – work use, work type, get him out there for all the snaps, except the head coach for Washington is the guy who was doing that for Christian McCaffrey back on the Carolina Panthers. So we have the guy who's already shown he's willing to do it. A little bit. I, I will The guy say, that also went out and pursued J.D. McKissick. I, I will definitely say that while he was the guy that, you know, obviously uh, deployed Christian McCaffrey like that, he had Christian McCaffrey. Sure. And I don't think Antonio Gibson is Christian McCaffrey. He would have been no. drafted top 10. So this is this, this is a guy that I expect to be far more involved in the running game and more involved in the passing game. It's no guarantee. There are no guarantees. But when you comp to Miles Sanders, who could catch the ball, and Josh Jacobs, who could catch the ball, this was a wide receiver. Like yeah. This is a, a convert, just like David Johnson was. This is a converted wide receiver, and he's a guy who's 228 pounds sub 4'4". Okay. Most most of the time when you see, you know, a rookie come in though, you're saying he's a converted wide receiver and he he made his hay on the ground. Yeah. He did last year. So this you know what I mean and they use somebody like JD McKissick is not I just want people to realize it was Alvin Kamara and JD McKissick and no one else at the top of all running back wide receiver lists. It was 83 and 80 receptions. The next guy's down in the 60s. So you're talking about the second most prolific pass catcher is on the roster and secure on the team. Yeah, but that was with Alex Smith, where everything was a dump off. And and also, just so you are aware, before his that doesn't injury... Hurt, that doesn't hurt um, uh, Antonio Gibson? What? I mean, if you're making... You're saying that was Alex Smith. Why would Antonio Gibson get more work under the same premise? I'm saying that McKissick's prolific pass catching was in due in part because he had a quarterback that wouldn't drive the ball down the field. They needed McKissick in the game to have those dump offs. But before the Pittsburgh injury, Antonio Gibson rookie year was on pace for 68 targets and 55 receptions. Those are phenomenal pass catching numbers. And that was with McKissick. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm but, just but saying far, I far, far cry from the the big boys in the in the, the top five area that you're talking about. Yeah. Well, far, far cry certainly from Christian McCaffrey. And I do not think he has that ability whatsoever. Terry McLaurin, Curtis. I don't think top five is possible for Gibson. That's my point. Uh, you do. Uh, Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick has not played with either of these players before. Uh, McLaurin They're is sitting They're already at, friends, though. 
We saw the chalkboard. That they're friends, they're yep. buddies? All three of them, though, mm -hmm. right? McLaurin's at wide receiver 11. Curtis Samuel's at wide receiver 38 on our current rankings. That feels like too big of a gap to me. I don't think the gap is too big. I think that Terry McLaurin is at the ap appropriate spot uh, for ADP. I think that it, he could provide a value there as well. But I agree if you're saying the gap is too big that Curtis Samuel shouldn't be that low, then I definitely I definitely agree with that, that Ryan Fitzpatrick will, uh, with the evidence of, that we've seen with him, utilizing two wide receivers and force-feeding those guys targets. I think Curtis Samuel right now presents a, a great value for for a wide receiver three type of a player. Yeah, those were that was ADP, not our rankings. That yes. was just the, how far the gap is right now. McLaurin in the third round, you're happy with him there? Yes. Um, 12.9 per catch last year. Samuel's in the 11 range. Both players should really give Fitzpatrick the opportunity to do what he does and have trust in the receiving game. Logan Thomas could be the one – player that sees a diminished uh, total quantity. I mean, 110 targets, that's a lot. 72 receptions. I don't think any of us haven't projected to do that again. Mike, he was your early bust pick in June. Yeah, I am. Logan Thomas is one of those players. It, it was a great story last year. He was incredibly necessary for this team. The team was, aside from the running backs, it was Terry McLaurin and Logan Thomas. Like He he was there when they needed him, but the team went out and you have, uh, and they made some additions and you have some players coming back from injury. I am out. I, I am OUT on Logan Thomas. I am willing to be wrong on him because uh, it's not that I don't think he's a bad player or anything by that. He's you know growing into the tight end role as as a professional, but I don't see the targets really being there like they were last year. And then on top of that, looking at the you know the the tendencies of of Ryan Fitzpatrick, and we just we have not seen an actual prolific fantasy football tight end paired with Ryan Fitzpatrick. All right, let's move on to somehow. Let's move on to the second place team in the division, the New York Giants, six and ten. Started one and seven. Okay, so you you saw, um, you know you saw an improving team over the back half of the year. When you start one and seven, it's that's as bad as it gets, but um, Judge and Company, I, you know, I liked what I started to see with no Saquon all year long. Again, the offense struggled tremendously. Yeah, uh, this division struggled tremendously, and um, you know, they add Kenny Galladay, Devontae Booker, they add Kyle Rudolph, uh, they get Saquon back. This is a Daniel Jones question. I mean, yeah, that's, they were this, the only team to have a quarterback uh, fail to surpass 300 passing yards in a game. Yeah, I mean, uh, Daniel Jones wasn't good. This yeah, was he was he was bad. This was the time last year where we were saying, "Well, we're going to find out what Daniel Jones is made of. He's coming into his second year, yada yada." Now a year later, we're saying, "Well, this is the time we're going to find out what Daniel Jones is made of." They got Kenny Galladay. They did this stuff early on in the off season. I really, uh, I really was hopeful for Daniel Jones not not expecting uh, but my my optimism has really gone away and I feel the need to go watch his film again just to see if I see some but I'm very pessimistic and your eyes him. might bleed Be, yeah being able to do what the Giants want him to be able to do which obviously has an effect on Kenny Galladay's fantasy value and and the whole touchdown output of the offense there's plenty to be concerned about because the foundation of a great offense is often that offensive line being able to protect a young quarterback like Daniel Jones has physical gifts and talents no question yes. about it um you know but so did Jay Cutler so did a lot of the anybody that comes into the league with that draft capital has great physical talent um but this was the 31st ranked offensive line last year they go into the upcoming season uh ranked 32 according to pro football focus projecting forward how many teams are there uh they're 32 <laughs> okay and so you're you're asking Daniel Jones to overcome quite a bit, I think, with the offensive line situation. Um, it, it's just a hard thing to bank on as a fantasy player. It doesn't mean that there's a 0% chance he has a breakout third-year campaign, but I would say that the odds are higher that they're looking for a new quarterback than it is that he breaks out in year three. Wild numbers here for Daniel Jones, who – 
I I think he will be better this year, but I don't know if people realize how close statistically his two years were. His rookie year, he completed 284 passes uh, at a 62% clip. Last year, he completed 280 passes at a 63% clip. Rookie year, threw for just over 3,000 yards. Last year, threw for just under 3,000 yards. Interceptions, 12, 10. Like, everything is exactly the same, except... Did he fumble at the same rate? Uh, I don't know. That's how it, I, I know him for. That's what he's known he for. He fumbled way more his rookie year. 18 okay. fumbles to 11 last year. Oof. Oh, he got it all the way down to 11 that's fumbles? That's so many. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's but, really, good job, Daniel. But here's what, this is where it's like Daniel Jones is going to be better. Because all of those numbers are, I mean, for statistically speaking, those are almost identical. But 24 passing touchdowns as a rookie, 11 touchdowns last year, 2.5%. 2.5% of his attempts turned into a touchdown, which is two full points under the league average. Like it was that's that's a statistical anomaly. Even if Daniel Jones isn't the guy or the future for the team, that's that's an outlier stat to me. Well, Saquon back in the passing game will help. Kenny Galladay being added as a big body target that is that's a touchdown. It's a, a big upgrade. You know, he's a double digit touchdown threat that will help tremendously. Uh, and he still has other weapons. Evan Ingram is valuable. Shepard, Slayton. He showed some long ball propensity last year. Yep. Like if you look at the numbers, that's the one area where Daniel Jones has stood out uh, success wise. Is he's been one of the better deep ball throwers in the league. So that there are some opportunities there. Starts and, against Denver and Washington. And from weeks nine on, he cut his turnovers down. Like he only had three turnovers from that point on. That's um, a very short period, though, isn't it? Because he missed several of those games. I believe so. You so. can't turn the yeah. ball over I believe he was when hurt. you're not active, and that's one of the benefits missed, of not having him games. active. Yeah, I mean, he can run the football, which helps for fantasy purposes if you're streaming him on a certain week. And uh, but he only had two weeks inside the QB one range at all last year. So projecting anything for fantasy, I mean, I think we can leave it there on Daniel Jones. What do you think the win total is for oh, for man. the Giants? Seven, I would take the under. I'll go. I'll go six and a half. It's seven, of course. Wow! Nice. I Impressive. can't wait to get to the Eagles because I think me and me and the uh, <laughs> the lines are going to disagree on that. What, one. You, what you need to be excited about is the fact that Arizona is legalized sports betting, and now you can go yeah smash everyone. Of course, you're just picking the lines, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't, I don't want to call what happened. You can go wanna... work for the. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the push all pushes. It's like. Taking the bets against the bookmaker. <laughs> yeah, I'll take seven and a half. So you can't bet a half win. We Watch have, me. <laughs> we have talked a lot about Saquon Barkley. He's our RB. Uh, he's the RB five off the board right now. He's lower than that for me. Um, I think there is tremendous risk with Barkley. Injury, offensive line play, time period between elite play and now, uh, and when you spend that big of a pick, right, that important of a pick for your fantasy team, and you have other options, whether it's Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, um, Ezekiel Elliott. Like, it's hard for me to say, hey, I'm going to put all of my hopes and dreams on Saquon Barkley coming off the injury because it was, it was a bad injury. Yeah, it was a bad injury. October 30th surgery that was you know very delayed from when he had it due to the severe nature of it. Uh, again, we here, we expect him to be active and ready to go week one. We expect him to get off to possibly a slow start. Um, I, I, I still think he's a world-class running back, one of the best, most talented individuals out there. And by the end of the season, I think he'll get it going. Um, I don't think he'll ever get back to the Eli Manning pass volume No. Uh, with Daniel Jones, which will obviously take him down a, a peg, and this offense isn't one you love. So, uh, you know, towards the end of the year, I expect him to be around running back five, but I agree with you, Andy, it's, it's hard – to draft him right now when you're you know especially if you're at the three spot the four spot he's very very tempting there and I would rather go with the Camaro or someone that that doesn't have these uh injury question marks I'll take him after Zeke okay Kenny Galladay he's at 504 Whew. which Kenny Galladay are we getting are we getting the smooth one I mean, I've got to make a decision on this soundboard right here, right I'm, now. I'm going to – so Mike's going smooth. Well, wait, look at his ADP. Okay. Wide receiver 20. Wide receiver 20. Okay. A player that just received, you know, bags and bags and bags of money. He's the unquestioned number one on this team. 
Mm, I've... Thank oh. you. Thank you. All right. Thank okay, you. let's get smooth here, Kenny. G. Wide receiver 20 I ha- is so- fine. I have him. Oh, we're we're going. Let's we're go. being smooth. I have him as my wide receiver 18, so I guess I'm so fine with the- him there. But yeah, I'm not excited. I, I'm actually, sub- you know. Volume, man, it's the king of fantasy football, and he's going to see a lot of it. Yeah. And yeah, he, and he's a dominant wide yes, receiver. He's a he's dominant good. talent. He has been exclusively outside his whole career. Um, but I, you know, his receiving line uh, right now on DraftKings Sportsbook is 1,000 yards. Yeah, I would take the over. So, um, and getting him in the fifth round, if he's a wide receiver two, Kenny Galladay wide receiver two, with probably a guaranteed target share, he may not be prolific, but you'll probably be okay. Dude, that's exactly that's why I like Kenny Galladay, where the the draft price is nice. It's it's in the right spot where <laughs> nice price. Oh, so nice for Mike. Uh, that if Kenny Galladay has a down season, you know it. Uh, I'm not talking about health, but he has a down season on the field. He'll be about the wide receiver 20, 22. But Kenny Galladay has actual upside to. To be a top twelve guy, like he, he, it wouldn't surprise. Or let me guess this, Andy, would it surprise you if Kenny Galladay finishes the year with twelve touchdowns? Uh, no. I mean, wish you'd said ten, but yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. He, the problem with Galladay historically, right? Without projecting him as okay, he got a bag of cash now. All of a sudden, he's a different player. Is that he's a sixty-five to seventy reception player, even when he had a pro- has been has been that. Right. I mean, all I can go with is has been. And and when he's been healthy, which has not been very many full seasons, he's a 65 to 70 reception player. So that would be the case against Kenny Galladay is you get 70 from Daniel Jones. How do you get to 12 touchdowns? And if you get 65 receptions and six, you're going to be probably, uh, you know, unhappy. I don't know. Drafting him at twenty, I think is I'm, yeah. I'm in on that. I mean that. the the draft price is a lot better than it used to be. Evan Ingram, worst fantasy season ever with a hundred <laughs> targets last year. That sounds about Evan Ingram. But it, I mean, uh, is there hope there? I mean, hundred targets. I think there is yes, hope, hope in Dynasty that he changes teams and becomes something more important. I I have a hard time trusting. So, so in Dynasty, would you trade for him right now? Because he's this is the I believe he's on the the fifth year. Yes. So um, next year he should be on a different team. Uh, so, uh, honest to goodness, I went in our league. Oh, that was a mistake. To try, yeah, <laughs> that's that's what happened. Mike knows the rest of the team. story. I went to look for Evan Ingram because I I am not a believer of him long term, but I do think he's a talented young tight end physically. Where when he hits the free agent market, someone might you know you've got a, you've got history of tight end switching teams and then becoming what they were drafted to be. Yes. Um, and and um. He hasn't done it here. I don't believe he'll do it this season, not with more mouths to feed in the offense. He'll have streaming value, but I, I don't want to draft who projects to be at best the third target, but more than likely the fifth or sixth target on his team. Cowboys were 6-10 and 10 last year, matching the Giants. Dak went down in week five in the next four games. Leading into the bye, they scored 10 points, 9 points, 3 points, and 19 points. Woof. Failed to cover the spread in 17% of their ga- or 70% of their games, including the first seven. Woof. Uh, despite having the number one pace of play, 17th in points per game, this was the lack of Dak. The lack of Dak yep. destroyed the offense. Yep. For comparison, those first four games, they scored uh, 20, 40, uh, 31, and 38. Yeah, and obviously that wasn't necessarily going to continue, but it was going to be great. It was with that pace of play. You talked about it on the NFC West show with Kyler and the Cardinals. It was going to be wonderful. Instead, we got the Dalton Danucci um, experience, and that was less desirable. Now the defensive side—that's where they spent their draft picks. A lot of them trying to improve that side of the ball because they were 31st against the run, 28th in points against. Both of those things really lend themselves to being a prolific offense, right? You're playing catch up. Right. You're you're throwing the ball a ton. Uh, you're trying to get back into games or stay stay in these shootouts. So I don't know what those defensive improvements will do, but Kellen Moore's back, Mike McCarthy's back, and most importantly, Dak is back. 
Yeah, I mean, I think with Dak um, under center, you're going to see a, a very good offense, certainly a top 10 offense in the counting stats that matter for fantasy football. And so I, I, I like drafting Dak in general. I, I like having Dak on my roster. I don't think I would draft him in the fifth round, which is where he's going. I was surprised. I thought you were going to have a lot of people off this season due to coming back from the ankle injury. Um but he makes everything else go. He is the reason that I'm back in on Ezekiel Elliott. He's the reason that I love the value of Amari Cooper if he's you know active and, and healthy. Um, and then you combine him with CeeDee Lamb's own reasons to be madly in love, and you see why he's skyrocketing. I, I, I think you just want pieces of a great offense, so that kind of speaks to your Michael Gallup questions earlier of if this is going to be a really great offense, won't Michael Gallup have some games? Probably. Yeah, I, I think he, he'll he probably have a lot of them. I mean, it's hard to complain. Like, Dak coming back from injury with Zeke and those three wideouts and then two talented wide receivers with Jarwin and Schultz that contributed. Well, Jarwin will and Schultz did last year. Like, there aren't holes on this offense. You even have a great depth running back in Tony Pollard who can uh, take a little bit of pressure off of Zeke or give you an explosive play. Like, if Dak is himself – like it's impossible that this is not a top half offense and it's most likely going to be a top five offense in football. Yep. I do not disagree. And they're by far my pick to win the division. As much as I'm rooting for Washington, Dallas is my pick. They have the highest Vegas total. Where do you mm -hmm. think that's at? I unfortunately just saw it. So I will abstain. Uh, I mean, are they really at nine and a half? They're at nine. Okay. Yeah. They were at nine and a half earlier this off season, believe it or not. But um, with that wide receiver room, just because it's a great one doesn't mean it's easy to project for fantasy purposes because you might not know who to start, when to start them. Cooper and Lamb are going basically back-to-back -back in fantasy drafts. I mean, you have both of them as fourth-round picks, and then Gallup's way down in the 10th round. So uh, how do you see this playing out in terms of upside and security? I think – security if if Amari Cooper is active by the time the drafts come around and he's back at camp which is uh the expectation prior to the season then I still have yeah I'm gonna be hanging with Mr. Cooper because I think the security is there the upside is there when he's been with Dak he's been absolutely phenomenal um he's also he moves around they use him on the outside they move him into the slot they move him everywhere because he is their primary first read target even if he's not the most talented, if CeeDee Lamb this season has leapfrogged him in talent, I do worry a little bit about the utilization. Well, they do that now that he's not a rookie. He absolutely could uh, explore more. But I'm last coming year, around to, to, CD. to the CD, I, I am too a little <sighs> bit because – And I'm not happy about it. It's just true. Yeah. Well, especially with I've the been Amari in on Cooper, Cooper. Especially with the Amari Cooper injury, it makes it a lot easier. If, if there's a window – and an opportunity given to CD, I know he can capture. It. And it's yeah, and it's part of it is just um like if you're if you're that good, you get the ball right. Like yes, if you're that course. explosive, Dak's going to find you. And I wonder if we're going to see. I think most a lot of people projecting it, but I wonder if that Jefferson explosive Beckham explosive season comes this year from CD Lamb with all that's afforded to him with Cooper and Gallup and Zeke and the play action. Like, I just wonder if you will see that, and I'm starting to come around to that way of thought. Yeah, my only question is whether they will use him in more various ways. Last year, he was pretty much exclusively a slot yeah, wide him receiver. And, Juju. And, he, and he did great, but that will limit. I mean, some of the touchdowns he had was on special teams. It kind of inflates his, his end-of-season ranking from, from what he did, but I – I mean, you know, coming out, he was my favorite wide receiver last mm -hmm. year. I was madly in love with, with C.D. Lamb. And um, in this offense, first pace of play, yeah, I'm fine taking a shot on either one of them. It's just so brutal with the the, the ADP of C.D. Lamb. is It puts you in a tough spot as, as a fantasy football player of he – like your margin for error is so small. Uh, taking taking him in the fourth round. I don't think it is, and here's why. I believe it, right now they're being drafted as the wide receiver 16, wide receiver 17. If him, if if Cooper, Lamb, and Dak all play the season, right, and nobody's injured, I cannot fathom a world 
where all uh, where both guys are not top 24 wide receivers. So that's the floor. They're being drafted somewhat okay. near their floor. And we know year after year after year, there are plenty of great offenses that have two yes. top 12 wide receivers and or and or two top 24 wide receivers. This is the case where it's like you're you're drafting them near what would be the floor assuming health and you could have two top 12 guys here. Mike, does Blake Jarwin have the ceiling you had hoped for him last year? The ceiling, no, uh, because of the emergence of, of CeeDee Lamb. I, I think that Blake Jarwin can still finish as a tight end one, and I, that's how I have it projected. Of For everything that you guys have laid out of, of how great this offense is, I think there will be enough from, from Dak Prescott to support three weapons, uh, three pass-catching weapons. Is there a chance Dalton Schultz – Gets more snaps than Blake Jarwin. Of course, there's yes, there is definitely the chance. Um, but it would, and Dalton Schultz was, Dal Dalton Schultz, his success last year with bad quarterback play is the reason that I'm you know, that I still have hope for Blake Jarwin. And it, like this is just how you want to look at the situation. You you have one person who says, well, Dalton Schultz proved to the team that he can be the player. Uh, and so he's going to earn more snaps. And then you, my side, which is Blake Jarwin, to me, what I've seen of him, he is by far the more explosive and bigger playmaker, uh, playmaking option for the team over Dalton Schultz. And he is the one who still has the, the, the contract. I mean, I, does the team just abandon everything that they believe they had in Blake Jarwin because a guy tore his ACL in week one? I don't think they do. I, you're not worried about Jeremy Sprinkle? Rising to the top. Oh, of that, Sprinkle! To the top of that. Is depth he seriously chart. there? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh man, Jeremy Sprinkle! Yeah, there, there have been all sorts of speculation out of Dallas camp with the tight end room. To be honest with you, whether everything from Dalton Schultz is the secret weapon that they're going to utilize a ton this year to Dalton Schultz could be traded because he's proven that he's valuable, and they they have Darwin coming back, so they can get value on Dalton Schultz. And the and what's nice here is Darwin had the ACL, but. We talked about players that went on to the pup for training camp, not Jarwin. He is he is there. He is active and ready to go. We don't have to play this game of is he going to be ready by by uh, by the season starting. So I still have confidence in Blake Jarwin, but no, the ceiling I had hoped for, I don't think it's there. All right, uh, the Eagles at four eleven and one. Oh baby. Well, Doug Peterson, gone. Carson Wentz, gone. Uh, they have nine nine total players left from their 2017 Super Bowl team. Let's get let's get to the main show here. Yeah, we want that over under, Jason. What's the Vegas line? I'm putting them at seven. Mike, I'll take the under on that. There you go. It's at six and a half. Ha -ha! Ha -ha! Got that's, one. That's not a lot of wins in a new newly uh, forged 17 game season. Uh, there are issues on this roster. Uh, they lost Wentz, Jeffrey, D. Jax, their head coach. So you've got the first year of Nick Sirianni, the first year of uh, Shane Steichen, the first full season for Jalen Hurts, the first season for Devonta Smith, yep. and the first year that they may be without Zach Ertz in this offense, which, Mike, that's a check in the right column for you, I think. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's the first year without him. Oh. oh well done, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Kyle mentioned that they have nine players left on the 2017 team, but only eight if you don't count Zach Ertz's <laughs> corpse walking around. Um, this was a rough season for – this was the opposite of the uh, Washington, where you mentioned that they have, like, players in every single position yep. that were contributing. This was what – goes wrong when you're 26th in points per game and you have nobody, right? Like, other than the f the handful of weeks with Jalen Hurts. Miles Sanders. Uh, yeah, Miles Sanders was still a... He was still a starter for fantasy. He was a starter for fantasy, but he was a disappointment for fantasy players. Yes. Relative to draft capital and position. And you are the greatest example of that because you have an undying um, bitterness towards Miles Sanders for what he provided your fantasy team last year. It really is true, Mike, that your love for Miles Sanders has created a hate for Miles Sanders where I believe and correct me if I'm wrong but if you were in the 12th round and and Miles Sanders sitting there on the board I'm I'm pretty confident you're like nope I, not on my team 
I would take him in the 12th. In the just 12th. to bench him just week not, to week. <laughs> just to cut him. Just to get rid of him. Well, it'd be more like a service to the rest of the Fantasy Football League. Of, it's look, such ladies a and gentlemen, testimony to, to the Burns because – well, look, I'm, it's just, I'm protecting everybody else from making a mistake. If I take him and I put him on the bench, then I know that you can't play him. I'm protecting you from oh, yourself. Oh, it's selfless. That yes. Is, yeah. That is very big of you. Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> there there are a lot. I mean, I get why Vegas has this at six and a half, right? And, um, you know, there have been – there were rumors going into the draft that Philadelphia might take a quarterback. Now, Jalen Hurts, obviously for fantasy purposes, was very good. But I think the jury's out in Philadelphia – and yeah. at the NFL level as to whether he's the long-term answer, those questions will probably get answered. There have been rumors about Deshaun Watson to Philadelphia. Um, an article came out the other day saying that there's kind of three teams that like Houston's basically committed to trading him and Miami, uh, Philadelphia, and Denver are the three teams that he can go to. So there's that question mark about their future. But we have to live in the present. And today, Jalen Hurts is the quarterback of the Philadelphia football Eagles. Football Eagles. That's right. Nice. Um, so we've talked a lot this offseason, but you might not have heard all of that discussion on Jalen Hurts. So let's summarize it. Uh, last year, he had four starts. He finished 13th, 1st, 12th, and 18th at the quarterback position. So, well, And in the last one, he was benched. Um, right. You remember the, the After, final? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he... Looked, there was a look, lot of storyline in there as well. Players upset and that there was promises yeah. made to the backup that he would get in on that game. So the, He probably wasn't going to have a top finish starting 7 for 20 with no touchdowns in that game either. Um, but you're right. So even if you look at the other one, he was a QB1 in that range three games in a row. Uh, we've talked a lot about him. Um, he was... He's been on bus shows. He's been on breakout shows, depending on who you're talking to. <laughs> I don't really want to fight about Jalen Hurts today, but I want to highlight, I guess, bull case, bear case. Um, if he plays the full season, could, do, can he finish as a top five quarterback? Yeah. Yeah, because he has the ability to Run possibly for rush yards. for 1,000 yards. Yeah. I, I don't expect him to. And I think that top five, when we say does he have the ability, that's that's misleading because I don't think that is a high probability um, versus being in the back half of the quarterback ones because, uh, you know, he he's – I think it's been said he's, you know, 75% of Kyler's rushing, 75% of Kyler's passing. That's great for fantasy, but it's it's the back half of, uh, you know, the quarterback ones. And he does not have a great wide receiving core. I love Devontae Smith. I think he's going to be a good NFL wide receiver, but he is a rookie. And outside of him, it's a hodgepodge of, of nonsense. And it looks like right now, Zach Ertz might be back, which just possibly hurts his receiving core. It's funny. Cause Jalen Rager, I saw Kyle shared this stat where like his first reception in target. Oh, it was a bomb. Was a 55. Yeah. Yard, 55! 55 yard catch, which also equaled the most yardage he had in a game. Like the most yards he had in a game was 55 yards, which was the first catch of his career. Yeah, it was, it was a brutal start to so, our career for Rigger. If you want some uh, balanced perspective on Hertz in terms of our rankings, uh, Mike is the highest at seventh, Jason down at 10. Uh, I'm at 13. I know that this was a discovery process for all of us when we did our projections and where we thought Hertz would end up. Um, and I just don't think the three games we saw were enough to know everything that you're going to get. I mean, in terms of like, Taking those three games and projecting them over seventeen. Of, of course, you, you don't. You can't just extrapolate all those things. But what you can take from those three games is that Jalen Hurts has incredible rushing ability. No question. A rushing quarterback is a cheat code for fantasy football. Uh, yes. Since nineteen seventy five, we've seen a quarterback eclipse one hundred twenty five plus rushing attempts nine times, and all of those nine or all but once, those quarterbacks were top 12 quarterback yeah I, I think even with me having him at 13 if I think you told me today that Jalen Hurts is the quarterback for 17 straight weeks I have to move him to my top 10 like there's no right. choice and and like he's got like what do you believe about Devonte Smith how good do you think he is actually going to be as as a professional because in college I mean he was the best he was the best he was dominant so you add him to the team the fact that like I know it was it didn't work out for Jalen Rager, but Rager was a first round pick who got hurt and was in a really bad situation. So it 
People he, have definitely he, buried be, him too much. Yeah, and they're going to move. I believe they're going to move him into the slot, so he could have a. He should face easier competition when it comes to defensive backs, which could be a, a better situation for him. And all of a sudden, you have you you have an offense. Well, that's, let's not forget Travis Fulgham, gentlemen. Oh well, the team has uh, the team. You got to know when to tried. hold him, know when to Fulgham. Oh mm -hmm. man, that that Did three we bring weeks up Greg was Ward? great. <laughs> Well, he'll be involved. <laughs> okay. He actually will. Uh, Dallas Goddard right now is our tight end. Uh, yeah, he's and the tight Dan end Goddard. seven off the board. I've had the hardest time deciding whether I like Goddard or Higby more yeah. this year. You and me are in sync on these tight ends. Oh, this are year. we? Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm always between those guys. I literally had last week. I moved some projections around because I saw Goddard just better than Higby. And then like two days later, Higby's just better than Goddard. I mean, it really comes down to whether or not Zach Ertz is part of this team. Because Which right now it looks like he will be. It does look that way. Um, if he is, that that really is a shame for for Goddard's breakout potential. Um, if Ertz is it, cut yeah. or traded, which he couldn't be traded, nobody's trading for him. Um, but if he is cut to save money, then I think Goddard has a legit chance to break out. And unlike my, you know, I've 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 got uh, Hawkinson ranked above Goddard, but I don't want to spend a fifth for Hawkinson. It, it gets to seventh round, and and you know, uh, Dallas Goddard's there. I'm willing to to spin that capital uh circling back to devonta smith real quick um would you take him at his current adp which is yes. the late seventh round wide receiver 35 like, yeah it's 7 12 so late seven early eight it's risen like his adp has gone up a lot a lot and it's going to continue uh, you know if, if he has a decent camp you're not going to get him here no you're not and and um but that's why at the current ADP, I would I would certainly <laughs> take him. Can you do like – is this like a rate lock for a mortgage company? Can, <laughs> oh, that would be Can great. we just rate lock these players at their ADPs like in, lock it in. June 23rd? <laughs> I got uh, locked on an uh, uh, an 801 yeah. for, uh, yeah. for Devonta Smith. Yeah, I talked to Steve. He, he locked me in, 801. <laughs> Give him to me. He's not yours. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun to watch. Starts against Atlanta in Atlanta, then San Francisco in, in Dallas. So um, – Always remember, two against Dallas, two against the Giants. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, the two against Washington might be tougher, but I, I, I got you. I omitted those. Yeah. All right. This is a big question, though, because I think we will not answer the same uh, team. Who wins the division? I've got Dallas. Washington. I have Dallas because of Fitzpatrick. He finds a way to not win the division. All, All right. Us. The toughest player to project in the entire division. Mike. I am? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go Miles Sanders. Oh man, that's, how much will they use him? How yeah. often? Family feuds. Tell good answer. Good yeah, answer. It's, it's Miles Sanders for me as well. Because um, we might be undervaluing him. RB twenty one off the board right now. Yeah, for me, it's it's probably uh, <laughs> Miles Sanders. Oh, and, also, and also Ryan Fitzpatrick. Like, sure. Like his his ADP of quarterback twenty five. Like it's he's. He's going to finish above that. Look, I I think Jalen Hurts fits into that hard-to-project player because if Philadelphia's win total holds true, right, and you're the worst team in the division, this is what I had a problem with Gardner Minshew with last year. It wasn't that the player's good. It's that when you have a bunch of – all the parts falling apart all around you, it's really hard to get through the season unscathed. And I think if Hurts does, he's great. If he doesn't, there's a lot of people that are counting on him to be the next Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, late round steal. And that could be. Um, and he, he could be. I mean, he could it, be. Yeah. And I the situation, like, he was hard. a rookie last year, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So, I mean, this is a second round pick. Rookie, three games played, basically. It's a second round pick quarterback who's played three games. So I think you're going to see a good bit of Jalen Hurts. Uh, oh, you will. And I wonder what the defenses will do because. Seeing a guy for three games, Gardner went and set the league on fire for a little while. It will be interesting how people adjust and whether he runs as much. Maybe sure. he doesn't have to with Devonta Smith. Um, sneaky player for 2021 out of this division. Uh, Jalen Rager certainly is is a sneaky guy that is getting absolutely no love. But I'm going to throw, because I didn't get to chime in on him, Curtis Samuel is uh, not sneaky but I, I think he, he's a little sneakier at his ADP. Jason's over here. I didn't get to chime in. Jason intentionally did not chime in on Curtis Samuel because he's hit his just, quota mentally let's already. Let's just leave it there. Yeah. Cause, cause Michael Gallup. Okay. And I would say Blake Jarwin. Okay. I almost went Blake Jarwin. All right. One final divisional show left. The NFC North 
that'll be coming out on Tuesday. My goodness, we've almost made it through. So uh, I'm sure Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, will he's going to make a decision. He'll make the, a decision for I was us. Say, you guys saw the the uh, oh Devontae the Adams, Adams news? news of that the the talks on the contract have gone sour. Maybe they're a package deal. Yeah, they usually that's are. What, that's what Adams is like. Okay, uh, I've also got this line down here. You guarantee Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback. Scary stuff. Milwaukee, at least you got your championship there. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.